Hey guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to another episode. We're in the van once again. I went for a little hike down the trail, came back, nice pretty view, found a nice little cool spot where a hydro dam was built back in the 1920s or something like that, back in the day, that powered Peachland. So we're gonna roll a clip after this. But I also wanted to talk about why I'm in the van and what got me into going into the van and why I love being in the van, things like that. So we'll see you guys here in a second. I'm gonna go check out this Trapanier Creek. Let's we'll see how it is. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it's nothing. Take you guys with me. So this is pretty cool. Apparently back in the day, this used to be a dam where they would take water from this and use it to power the city or the town of Peachland, which is kind of cool. But like back in like the early 1900s, so like almost 100 years ago, or just over 100 years ago, they had used this creek to power the agriculture and whatever else was going on in Peachland. Pretty freaking cool. And a nice little walk. We're gonna head back to the van. I had some lunch. I made the noodles. It's nice and windy out. Nice little breeze. It's almost too hot to wear this jacket. Oh well, I'll learn from next time. My van life skills are a little rusty, but we'll get to it, no worries. We'll catch you guys back at the van. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that little clip. Me uh, going for my little hike, get my feet some exercise, cause gotta stay healthy, you know? Can't just be sitting around watching Netflix all day. Anyways, so I got first started doing van life in 2022 when I first went to Ottawa, or Ottawa? is the local pronunciation or whatever. It's not Ottawa, it's Ottawa. It's, uh, the locals taught me that when I was down there, which is kind of cool. I drove in my car five days traveling on the road all the way to Ottawa. I was sponsored. Somebody wanted me to go down there because they wanted a personal one-on-one -on -one recount of what's going down in Ottawa. So somebody sent me money. I used that money to hotel every two or three days to have a shower, clean myself up, have a nice place to sleep. And the other two days or three days or whatever, I slept in my car. Even in Manitoba, during minus 30, 35 weather, I slept in my car and I had an amazing sleep. And it was the best thing ever. Like. Just pull over anywhere on the side of the road where, you know, it's legally allowed to pull over and sleep in your vehicle. And I just slept. Truck stops, pullovers, anywhere that didn't say no overnight parking on the side of the road. You can legally sleep there after 9.30 p.m. in Canada. Anywhere in Canada. As long as there's no, like, province-wide law that doesn't permit you to do that. But... The majority of places is free to park and sleep. I spent a week in Ottawa and uh, enjoyed my time there. I was down there protesting COVID mandates and all that stuff. I was just wanting to put an end to the crazy health mandates and vaccine mandates and all that fun stuff. It was just, it was just done. There was no reason to have those mandates in play anymore. Anyways, that being said, Enough of the political talk, let's move on. On my way back, I stopped in Quebec. I stayed in Quebec for two days. I wasn't allowed to do anything in Quebec because there was a lot of mandates and they were 
strict. Meeting new people was amazing. When I, when I first got to Ottawa, the amount of love and support and people helping each other and giving out free showers. I ended up having a shower on like the 21st floor, 23rd floor of a hotel, which was pretty cool. I've never been that high in a skyscraper or anything like that. So that was awesome. Just the love and support, freedom soup and all the fun stuff that people were doing now. They had hot tubs set up. I didn't go in a hot tub, but I digress. The amount of support I had going down to Ottawa was awesome. The freedom of just hitting the road whenever I wanted, going places I've never been. I actually stopped at Niagara Falls and had a little glimpse of like a quarter-ish part of Niagara Falls because it was so foggy. but. I did take a few hours to make that trip to see Niagara Falls. Just hearing the waterfall in, in the distance was just tremendous. Like it just rumbled your whole entire body when you got close to it. It was incredible feeling going down there. After leaving Niagara Falls, I ended up hitting quite a few major highways, uh, 407, uh, 411, Passing Toronto, seeing all those skyscrapers when I was passing over the Queen, was it Queen Edward? No, Queensway. I can't remember the name of the highway. Queensway Highway or something. Anyways, it connects from Niagara Falls up towards um, Toronto-ish area. I think Toronto's on the left. There's another city over on the right that's really big. Can't remember the name of it, but you, you'll know when you look at the map, you see Niagara Falls and then you drive up towards the western part of Canada. That's the route I took because I didn't have a passport. I didn't want to cross over to the States. And that's when I first fell in love with van life. After taking that trip to Ottawa and coming home and going back into the house, it was, it was like taking a part of my soul and just tossing it in the garbage. That's that's what it felt like coming home after being on the road for two weeks and seeing parts of Canada I've never seen before. Second time ever leaving British Columbia was going to Ottawa in February, 2022. And I was, what, 36 years old? I'm 38, turning 39 this year. And that's when I decided that that's, this is, what I need to do with my life. This is what I need to do to make my mental health. There's so much in life that, you know, having to pay bills and having to find a job that is nine to five. It, you know, I prefer doing odds and end jobs, you know, dump runs here and there and getting all that done, saving enough money and actually going and enjoying life instead of only taking two weeks off a year, I'm, I only wanna work maybe two or three months out of the year, and then I wanna travel the other nine, 10 months. So that's my goal, that's my end goal, is living in this van. A few months later, I decided to rip the passenger seat out of my car and put all my effort into building a bed platform that I was able to turn into a cook platform slash an area that I can work at to use my laptop to do video editing because I wanted to also make YouTube videos at the same time. So now that I had this work area and a way to travel and a vehicle that I could sleep in, I managed to put a solar panel on the roof, charge a couple house batteries in the back, that I ran a little freezer that I could carry around you know, a bunch of food because you gotta have a way to keep your meat frozen when you're traveling around in the bush. Because I didn't really want to go back to the grocery store every three or four days to buy a couple steaks or whatever. So I had a freezer, I had a couple batteries, I had a solar panel, and you guys can check all those videos out. They are on my channel right now. So after I get in my car, I just hightailed it to Vancouver Island 
because Vancouver Island is so beautiful. When I went there the first time, I always wanted to go back. So that was the one thing. I just spent the money, took the ferry, went over there, traveled around in my car, and ended up coming home for summer, packing up the kids and going camping for a few months, taking breaks in between, because, you know, kids, they don't want to go camping three months straight, two weeks, or two months straight. <laughs> they want to go home and relax in the air conditioning at Nana's house. Anyways, so the kids went home. I ended up getting back into the car and started traveling around Kootenays. I went all the way down to Peachland, Penticton, like I've been all over Nelson, Castlegar, Revelstoke, like Invermere, hot, the Radiant Hot Springs. Like I was traveling all that little area down there and just had a blast. Took a bunch of pictures, took a bunch of videos, uploaded a lot of YouTube videos, visited the world's largest paddle, things like that, and uploaded them to YouTube. Or you can check out that playlist on my channel as well. And you can see all those videos. And then I ended up finding this van for on for a really good price. I ended up borrowing a little bit of money and just buying this van because it was such a good price. It was very good. Rel the reliability of these vans are pretty good. I should expect to get, you know, 50, 30, 30 to 50,000 kilometers out of this thing without too much going wrong with it. Rebuilt transmission that was just put in all the paperwork's here and I checked under the floorboards and there's very little rust. There's very little rust on the frame. Any rust that is there can be repairable. So hopefully when I do get into making a bit more money, I can repair a bunch of stuff. But right now I am working on repaying some debts, paying off this fan, the few bucks that I did borrow, you know, insulating and putting a couple boards in here. A lot of this wood was free, so I didn't actually pay for it. Some of the stuff I've bought was on used marketplace, Facebook marketplace, and then waiting until things go on sale on Amazon. And then I built this fan out in less than two months and I recorded everything, uploaded it on YouTube as well. That's when I lived in this thing for an entire month before winter came and then I parked it just because I couldn't really afford all the gas money just to go from place to place to place to place to place. Cause it wouldn't be too bad if I can go somewhere and just park and stay for a week or two because I can just pull out the solar panels and stay and I can hook up the Starlink. I don't have to spend any gas money. I can live off solar power and Starlink internet and not have to worry about bills and rent and all that stuff. And I can just shove all that money on the credit card and pay off the few things that I did buy to get this van running to be comfortable enough that I just want to stay in this thing. Go fishing in the summer, take the kayak. I'm going to get a front receiver hitch and put a mountain bike on the front. I've got a trailer. I can haul a bunch of firewood around. This thing's awesome. I I'm so excited to be in this thing and bring you guys some content of either traveling or staying stationary and just exploring the van and making van life content and bringing you guys along with me. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I wasn't really too much of uh, exploring or out in nature or anything like that or me telling you the five best things about van life, but this is my journey and I'm bringing you guys with me, and this is why I love van life. And I hope you guys stick around so that I can show you more reasons why I love van life. Because I've even, I've got even like, I've got a Dutch oven to throw in a fire pit and play with. I like, I have a shower, I have a anytime fitness pass, I can go shower at the gym, I can go work out the gym, I can stretch my legs, I can go on a three, four hour hike. I can play a couple hours of video games every day and not have to worry about anything. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.